Thank you so much for joining us here at North Rock Church, where we exist to see lives redefined by being filled with life in Christ. If you have any questions or want to learn more about us, just stop by our website at northrocksa.com or you can follow us on Instagram at North Rock SA. We would love for you to stay connected with us throughout the week. With that being said, let's take a look at this week's message. Happy 2020, everybody. Good to see all of you here on the Stone Oak campus and down in Alamo Heights. Where you at, Alamo Heights? Y'all make some noise down there. Stone Oak, y'all make some noise for Alamo Heights. We're glad to have you in the house with us. What a great day, man. I've, I've, had, I've had some incredible church already today. I love that song the band just ended with, Spirit of God, Fall Fresh on Me. I don't know about you, but I need God's presence to fall fresh on me in 2020 like I've never needed it before. I I anticipate this year being the greatest year of my life, and if this year is going to be the greatest year of my life, then I need God's presence stronger, more real, more present than ever before in my life. I need His grace, His power, His guidance, His wisdom. I'm excited about church today. I'm excited about this new year and pumped about what I get to share with you today as we launch into a new series that we're going to uh, cover over the entire month of January called You in Five Years. You in Five Years. If you'll do me a favor and just kind of help, help me out here, play along with this, and just kind of picture in your mind's eye, if you were at a birthday party for you, at your current age, and they had two big balloons that had your birthday number on it, or in some cases, I guess, maybe one balloon, although they should all be in Kids Rock, but, but, but big, two big balloons, what would, that, what would it look like? What would it look like? What would those big balloons say? I'm not going to have you say it out loud, because some of y'all are intimidated by that, but mine would say 4'7", because I'm, I'm old, y'all. Yeah, I'm 47 years old, 4'7". Now... Move down the years, move down the years, uh, five. Move down, move down five years. And, and what, what would those balloons say then? Just trying to help you see, to think about you in five years. Mine would, of course, say 52, because I can add. <laughs> and I got to be honest with you. I know that 50 seems really, really old to some people in this room. But the closer you get to it, the younger it feels, the younger it seems. It's amazing. The older that you get, the younger everybody seems. Old people seem younger. Young people seem younger. Everybody seems younger the older that you get. And so here I am. I'm not, I mean, I'm not to 50 yet, but in five years, 52. I I think that sometimes when we launch into a new year and we're thinking about change, we're thinking about transformation in our life, that most of us overestimate what we can do in the short term, and we underestimate what we can do over the long term, especially with God's help over the long term. We look at a short period of time, and we think we can accomplish so much, but we underestimate the power of doing something significant over the long haul if we would just Stick with it. Just stick with it. One of the big problems with our culture today is we have very, very short attention spans. We do. We have very short attention spans. We want things to happen right now. We expect things to happen right now. If I think of something I need to buy, 
I can, I can buy it right now. Like, I don't have to waste any time. You could, you could shop right now in church. Please don't. But you could do your grocery shopping and then pick it up on the way home. It's amazing. You can have it delivered. You can do anything. We have everything at our fingertips. And so we have very short attention spans with the social media, kind of a YouTube generation. We used to call it a microwave society, but microwave, is, that's so old nowadays. It's more like the YouTube or, or the social media era. And, and, and so, so we, we tend to, if things, if we don't get what we want right now, we just, we just walk away. The moment there, or the moment that we're not ecstatic about where we are and what's going on, we walk away. The moment that we're not happy, we're kind of like the SpongeBob meme. When we're not happy anymore, we just say, right, I'm going to head out. I'm going to head out. I'm done. I'm done here. I mean, this ain't working out. We, we, we have these ideas about change, and so we, we go to the gym, and here we get in about the third week of January, and we look in the mirror, and we don't feel like we're seeing the guns we want to see. And so we're like, I, I've been to the gym three times, like I've gone one day every week, and I'm not, ain't nobody saying anything about how wide my shoulders are. Nobody said, wow, your stomach is so hard, it's so firm. Nobody's saying anything. I'm going to head out. Man, I'm done with this. This ain't for me. This working out business, this ain't for me, right? I'm going to save. I'm going to save money. And so out of that first paycheck of the year, I'm going to save this year. We save $10, and then, then we realize, you know, I actually want two extra shots in my mocha, so that's going to cost about $10. So we, we pull money out of the savings to pay for our coffee, and, and we just decide, eh, it's just it's not for me. It's not for me. We want to become, want to become, you know, more spiritual, and want to want our soul to grow. We want to become a man of God, and so we decide, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read my Bible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it, and so we get up, and you know, there's like the first two mornings we read a scripture, and then the third morning, you know, we were gonna read a scripture, but we got a text, and so we got distracted, and so we didn't read that day. By and day four, day five, we're like, I'm not the man of God that I want to be yet. I just, I'm thinking that the scripture reading, it's not really working out for me, or. We want to, be, want to be a great husband, and, and we, we're, we're, we're always looking for an easy answer. We're just, if, is, there, is, there a, is there a pill I can take, or is there, can I, is there something I can pour hot water into, and, and, and it just works? Is there something I can buy on Amazon, or is there a marriage conference that I can go to? We, we're always looking for quick fixes when really you just, you just need to stop being a jerk, and, and you start helping around the house, helping with the kids, and... And then somebody would say, well, I tried not being a jerk once, and that didn't work out, so I'm going to head out. I mean, it's just not, it's not working out for me. Or, or, we, or we, we want to change jobs again, because, you know, the job that we just got, you know, it's, I've been here like three weeks, and I'm ready for my promotion, and so, like, I went in and asked my boss, oh, where's the promotion, and he was like, do what now? I don't need a tyrant like that in my life. I mean, I don't need <laughs> bad energy in my life. So I'm going to find somewhere else to go work. It's got to be somewhere better. I'm going I'm to head out. I'm going to head out. Short attention spans. And the problem is we don't stay with things long enough to really see significant impact. It's true in ministry. Did you know that um, the average pastor lasts about three years? Average student pastor? Only about two years. How can we expect to make any significant impact if we don't give ourselves long enough to hit our stride? We overestimate what we can do in the short term. And we underestimate what we can do in the long term if we would just stick with it. Listen to me as we launch into 2020. People who start things are not people who make the greatest impact in their world. It's people who finish things. God's not impressed with great starters. He's impressed with great finishers. People who start things aren't the people who change their world, but people who stick with things and they finish. That's where the difference is made. And every one of us have had this temptation. We've all had those moments where we're like, I'm ahead. I am done. I'm done. If you knew how many times I felt like this over the life of North Rock Church. I mean, we launched this church about 11 years ago, almost 11 years ago now with about 11 people. And it was, there's been seasons that have been challenging. 
There have been seasons where I was not really happy. And I thought, ah, I, don't, I don't know about this. If I would have allowed myself to quit, I would have quit so many times. But I know, I know that I know that I know that f- starting something is not what's going to change my world. But sticking with something and finishing something, that's what's going to change my world. I, I, I want somebody to hear this this morning as we launch into this, this sermon series. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2 God is speaking to the church in Sardis, and he says, a place called Sardis, and he says, wake up, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished. Everybody say unfinished. Unfinished in the sight of my God. Somebody needs to hear this this morning. God is wanting you to wake up. He's wanting to kind of shake you a little bit because he's got unfinished business with you. He's got some things that he still intends yet to do in your life. You might be thinking that your best years are behind you and he's like, oh, no, 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 no. I've got so much in store for your future. If I can just get you to wake up, stick with it, follow me, listen to my voice, stay with the plan, live in your calling. You're not dead, so you're not done. I've got more to do with you. There's unfinished business for you. You here today, you might be thinking, I'm so broken, I'm so lonely. I want to tell you that God is not done with you. Wake up. There's some unfinished business in your life. Some unfinished. That's kind of the premise of this series, is that God has somewhere that he wants to take you. But don't expect things to happen overnight. Sometimes we just have to stick with it. We have to stay the course. So I don't want us us to attack this new year with just a, hey, what can I accomplish by February 1? You know, by the time Super Bowl weekend rolls around and I want to have that magazine cover body. Not going to happen. At least with most of you, it's not. (laughs) I mean, it's just the truth, guys. I'm just, but if you'll stick with it. I don't want you to think about, that's the first time I've said that in any of the services. You just never know what's going to pop out. It's 1130. <laughs> but I don't want us, I, I don't want us to, to overestimate what can take place even between now and January of, of 2021. But let's, let's think bigger than that. What could happen over these next five years if I were to focus and, and, and to trust the God who made me? The God who created heaven and earth, the God who is for me and is not against me, the God who sent his son to die for me, the God who has given me his spirit and I have the power and the strength and the grace that comes along with that. What could I accomplish over the next five years? I want to start with a passage here from Romans chapter, come on, Romans chapter 13. And and Paul is talking to the church in Rome. And here's what he says. This is the message paraphrase. He says, but make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all of your day-to-day obligations that you lose track of the time. Everybody say time. And you doze off, oblivious to God. Because the night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. I want you to wake up today and see that God has a plan for your life. That God has some unfinished business in your world. He's putting the finishing touches on the salvation work. He began when we first believed. He's not finished yet. There's more to do. There's more to accomplish in and through you. Continue. We can't afford to waste a minute. We must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity, indulgence, sleeping around, dissipation, and bickering and grabbing everything in sight. But get out of bed and get dressed. Somebody just needs to hear that today. Get out of bed and get dressed. Like you're wondering, I don't even know where to start. This is a great starting place for you. Get out of bed and just get dressed. Let let God lead you from there. But start here. Don't loiter and linger waiting until the very last minute. But dress yourselves in Christ. Just be up and about, listening, tuning in to what God has for you. I know that five years is a long time, and I know that 
Um, some, sometimes it's hard to even think about it and wrap your mind around it, but I started thinking about some things that you could accomplish over a five-year time period a couple of weeks back, and um, a few things here, some, some positive things that you could accomplish. I mean, you could literally, over a five-year time period, you could master a foreign language. Like, you, you really could. You could dive off into Rosetta Stone, you know, instead of watching cat videos on Instagram, just a thought, and, and you could master a foreign language. You could, you, you could have a new degree over a five-year time period. You could, you could be working in a new industry, or, you know, you could binge watch everything on Netflix. There's lots of options. You could take up a sport. You could, you could take up running. You could run a marathon. Some of you could run an Ironman if, 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 you know, if you wanted to, if you set your mind to it. I said some of you. I shouldn't have said that. Most of you could probably run an Ironman if you set your mind to it. Uh, chess, you could, you could take up chess. Like You could become a master chess player. You could be the next Bobby Fischer. You could read, if you just read one book a month, you could read 60 books, 60 books. You could radically transform your soul over the next five years. Like if you just set your mind and your heart to, grow, to, to, to growing closer to God than ever before. Like if you just made up your mind, I'm going to pursue God. Like I've pursued other things in the past. I'm going to turn that, that attention and that focus and that passion toward my Savior. And I'm going to pursue Him. You could radically transform your soul. You could dive off into God's Word. And you could hide God's Word in your heart. David, David proclaimed, I have hid your word in my heart so that I don't sin against you. It's amazing what you could do and how you could overcome temptation in your life that you might fall to or fall prey to over and over again if you would just hide God's word in your heart. You could read the Bible through in a year. Or if you just read two, two chapters a day. You could actually read the Bible through three times over the course of five years. What if you, at the end of 60 months, you had read the Bible through three times completely, and you, that word was just down in you. And so when, when temptation came your way, when Jesus was tempted by the enemy, he used God's word against the temptation. Every time the enemy would tempt him, Jesus would say, it is written what if the next time you were tempted to go out partying with friends and you knew that that's not what you needed to do, you, you used God's word against that temptation? It is written. Or, or you were tempted to watch pornography or something that you know you don't need to see or you don't need to dive off into, and you used God's word and you said, it is written. You can hide God's word in your heart. If you set your mind to it, it's amazing what you can accomplish over five years. There's also some bad things you could accomplish over five years. I mean, five years is plenty of time for you to have developed a major addiction, like a life-threatening addiction. Five years is plenty of time for you to have accrued a, a mountain of credit card debt. Although some of you are like, I can do that by the end of January, <laughs> by the end of this week, wow. by this afternoon. Five years is plenty of time for you to destroy a marriage and be coming out of a nasty divorce because you didn't prioritize your marriage. Five years is plenty of time for you to have done something tragic and at the, in 60 months you could be two to three years into serving a you know, five, 10 year sentence. Five years is plenty of time for you to do some, some, some really negative, bad things. Five years is plenty of time for you to do much for good and much for evil. Today, I just kind of want to prime the pump a little bit and get you thinking. I just want to lay a foundation. And if you're taking notes, here's where I want to start. Number one, time waits for no man. Time waits for no man. It just does not. Time is happening, and it's happening to you. It's happening to you. No matter how young you feel right now, time is happening happening. Here's what David said in Psalm 39 and 5. Indeed, Lord, you have made my days as handbreadths, and my age is nothing before you. Certainly, every man at his best state is but vapor, like it appears and then it's gone. Just like, the, just like a, a film on your windshield, a vapor in the air, it appears and then it's gone. 
We're cruising through life, you know, having fun, doing our thing. We're, we're shopping. We're, well, this time of the year, we're returning things and, and getting new things, different sizes or whatnot. And, 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 and we're, we're ordering on Amazon. We're cruising down the road in our F-150s here in Texas. We're, we're double-clicking on Instagram when we like things. That, that, you know, just, just living our life. And David says, you're going to just be doing that, having fun, and it's going to be a vapor. Suddenly, it's all going to be over. The psalmist said in Psalm chapter 90, verse 10, 70 years are given to us. Some even live to 80. But even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. Verse 12 says, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Teach us to understand the significance of every day of our life and how important those moments are so that we can pursue the right things, so that we can grow in godly wisdom. I know that there's 17-year-olds in the room and 24-year-olds in the room, and you're thinking, not me. I'm like in the prime of my life. I mean, I'm having a ball. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, listen, Linda. Listen, listen, listen. You're going to blink and decades will have passed. I know. It happens so fast. And the older you get, the faster time goes. I don't get that. I was looking at pictures the day before yesterday of things that happened at the very beginning of December. Like December, like four you know, weeks ago. And it was like that, it was, it was like yesterday, wasn't it? Like I don't, know the, I don't know where December went this year. I don't know where it went. It was Thanksgiving, and now we're here. I don't know what happened to Christmas. What happened to... I mean, it was like, where was it? It was there, and then it was gone. It's just, just a vapor. Just a, time waits for no man. No man. Number two, future you is simply an exaggerated version of current you. I'm going to take a sip of water here, and I'm just going to let that sink in. I just want you to read that and think about it. We, we tend to have this romantic idea about our future. Oh, in 10 years. I can't wait to see what my life's going to be like in 10 years. And who, who I'm going to have, you know, single, who I'm going to have married, or maybe if you're married, who else I will have married. <laughs> I'm out of control in this 1130. But we have these romantic ideas about the future, don't we? What job we're going to have and where we're going to be living. Let me, let me just, let me take the mystery out of it. We act like it's a great mystery. Who am I going to be when I grow up? Barring change, you're going to be exactly who you are now, only with a few more miles on the odometer. Future you is simply an exaggerated version of current you. If you're kind today, it's likely that you're going to be even more kind in five years, in 10 years. If you're generous today, it's likely that you're going to be even more generous in the years to come. If you're disciplined, you're likely to be even more disciplined. If today, though, you are cruel, it's likely that in years to come, you will be even more cruel. If you are self-centered today, future you is quite likely to be even more selfish and self-focused. If you're harsh, rude, you're likely to be harsh and rude in the future. I was with my family on a trip. We were in California last week, and we were at a pizza place trying to get some pizza. And the, 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 the young people working behind the counter were a little bit overwhelmed. And oh, it really wasn't that big of a deal. But the girl was like, we had somebody that didn't come in, didn't call. I was trying to explain why things were taking a little bit longer. Um, and there was an, an elderly lady who was not having it. Like She was not happy about how long it was taking her to get her call in order. She, was, she had her dog with her, and she was ticked, y'all. She was, she was ticked. She wasn't having it. 
She was mad. She kept walking up. How much longer? It's ridiculous. And she would step back like 30 seconds. How much longer? And she would just, excuse, she wouldn't, she wouldn't have any of it with anybody. Like I was standing there and she's like, excuse me, I, I need to get by. She, I, she didn't say excuse me. She said, could I get by with my dog? And it's like, you have a dog in the restaurant. But fine, take the, take the dog. Y'all go on, y'all go on. I'm just standing here taking up space. I'm clearly in the way. And I just, I see that and I'm thinking, oh God, please don't let me, don't let me be like that. Whenever I'm older, don't let me be that way. I want to be that kind old man who smiles and is, is tender and is patient and is easy to be around. I don't want to be like that lady in California in the pizza place. The truth is, who you are today seeps into the cracks of your soul, of your emotions, and it hardens, and it forms your character. Here's what the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 11, whoever seeks good finds favor. Those people who are looking for the good in things, looking for the good in the moment, even in bad situations, you know, you, it's amazing how you can find the good even in difficult seasons. You can always find God, even when you can't track him. After the fact, you will be able to look and see where God was working things for the good. And if you're looking for good, it's amazing how you'll find it and how favor will find you. But if you're looking for evil, I mean, and, and there are people that can find evil in the best of situations, the best of circumstances, the best of church services, they'll find something that was wrong. They'll find something that that preacher said or something that that's wrong. The best of situations, the best of husbands, the best of wives, they'll find something to nitpick. And if evil, if evil is what you're looking for, it's amazing, you're going to find it. It will come back on you. Who you are today drives who you will ultimately become. That's why it really matters for you single folk in the house. It really, really matters who you choose to marry, who you choose to spend the rest of your life with. I know we have this tendency to just look on the outside. Oh, I like what I see. Yes, I will take one, please. <laughs> Sign me up. I'm in. Uh, and, and we don't pay attention to those invisible things that grow over time that become stronger, whether for good or whether for bad. It matters the heart of the person that we connect ourselves to for the rest of our life. So if you're in the room and you're wondering about future you, I want to take the mystery out of it. It's current you, exaggerated. But I got some good news because I know there's some people freaking out right now. But I don't like me right now, okay? Okay. If you don't like what you're getting, you can change what you're doing because you're in charge. I mean, you are in charge of you. You are in charge of your direction. Consequently, you are in charge of your destination. Where am I going to arrive in five years? Well, that depends on what your direction is right now. So we have this idea that our intentions drive our destination. Well, I intend to be independently wealthy. Uh, I intend to be, you know, a magazine cover look. I intend to, well, but you, you're eating Krispy Kremes every day and, and you know, you're spending all your money. Your, your direction drives your destination. You, you can want to go to Dallas Really, really bad. Like you can intend to go to Dallas, but if you get in the car and you get on 35 going south, you're not getting to Dallas. Like you can grip the steering wheel, Dallas, 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 Dallas. You could sing songs about Dallas, going to Dallas, going to Dallas. You could, you could, you could dream about Dallas, but you've actually got to turn the car around and you've got to go north in order to get to Dallas. Some of us have these dreams about where we want to be in five years, in 10 years. And let me just tell you something. You're not going to get there on the path that you're on right now. You're going to have to make some changes. You're going to have to tweak some values, tweak some priorities. You might have to change some friends. But I like my friends. 
But if they're not taking you where you want to go, if they're pulling you away from your purpose, then you need to make some changes. You need people around you that are propelling you toward your purpose. If you're in a dating relationship that is not healthy and is not taking you and you know it's going nowhere, get out of it. End it. There's some habits that some of us have that we need, to, we need to shut off, that we need to shut down from in this new year because they're not taking us where we want to go and, and put in place some healthy habits that will get us to our desired destination. You are in charge of your direction, so you are in charge of where you're going to be, your destination in five years. And what you let in sets in. So some of us need to think about what we're letting in, people that we've let in, things, music that we're letting in, wh whatever binge watching that we're letting in, because you got to be careful, because what you let in, man, it will set in right now, right now. Pastor Greg Laurie said it this way. He said, the evening of life is determined by the morning of it. We set the pace for ourselves, and I want you to know in this room it's never too late for you to change. It's never too late for you to change directions. There's some people in this house that need to make some changes. We all do, I'm sure. And you need to know it's not too late for you to soften your heart, for you to yield your spirit to God, for you to repent and stop living for yourself and start living for him and his purpose. Start living for others. You might be at a crossroads today. I want to encourage you. You can change. You can choose life. You can. If you don't like what you're getting, change what you're doing. And finally, ongoing consistency is much more important than short-term intensity. Ongoing consistency. Just doing the same thing, the right thing. It's funny how <clears throat> this idea of going through the motions can sometimes have a bad connotation attached to it. They're just going through the motions, you know. They're just phoning it in. They're so set in their ways. I don't really know why that's all bad. It's only bad if you're going through the wrong motions. It's only bad if you're set in the wrong ways. Because going through the motions, ongoing consistency, will bring about miraculous power in your life. And it's so much more effective than short-term intensity. I, uh, I'm a gym goer. I go to the gym. I go to the gym five, six days a week. It's been a rough last month. Again, I told you, I don't even know where December went. But, but I, I, I was back in the gym yesterday. I'm, I'm a five to six day a week guy at the gym. And this time of the year can be frustrating for us consistent people because there's so many of these people that are in the gym. And it's not that I'm not happy for you. I'm not necessarily mad that you're here. It's just a little frustrating because there's no room. And I know that if I'll just hang with it, just give me two or three weeks, that, that they'll, they'll be gone. And it'll be back to us, old, boring, consistent people. You can always tell the short-term, intense people in the gym this time of the year. They're easy to spot because they're the ones walking around the equipment like this. They're not sure how to use that machine they're trying to figure out where the label is that shows them how to use it, and they they're just can't, oh, there's the drawing, I'm not sure what, and you see them, and they, 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 they get on the equipment, and you know they're getting on backwards, but you know you should tell them, but you're enjoying it too much, and about the time they realize that this doesn't seem to be doing anything, I'm not sure what muscle this is working, they realize this has got to be wrong, and they finally, you know, get on it, get on it right. And I, I, I just know, though, just give, give, it a, give it a few weeks and they'll, they'll all be gone and it'll just be back to us, us boring people who just, just do it over and over and over and over and over and over. And a lot of times the problem is what I was talking about at the beginning. Nobody's bragging on their big muscles after three weeks and so they're like, I'm out, I'm out of here. But that's not how it works. If you'll just stay with it, just stay with it. It's amazing. It might take a month. It might take six weeks. It might take two months. It might take six months. But sooner or later. Somebody asked me a while back, how long was it before you actually started seeing 
you know, seeing a change whenever you're working out. I'm like, I really don't know. I, I, I don't, I can't really remember that. I just stuck with it though. You just stick with it. Ongoing consistency. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go to church. I'm gonna go to church this week. <laughs> I'm gonna go to church next weekend too. And you know what? I'm gonna go to church the third weekend of January and the fourth weekend of January. And Super Bowl Sunday, I know we're having a big party, but the game don't start till like 5, 5, 3, 5 25. So I'm gonna go to church Super Bowl Sunday too. It's one of the greatest Sundays of the year around here anyway. I love Super Bowl Sunday. Y'all gonna wanna be here Super Bowl Sunday. But, but, but I'm, just, I'm just gonna go to church. But we could go, you know, to the lake. Sure, we could go, let's go Saturday. Or let's go to Saturday night church. Let's go to Saturday church on Saturday night and then we'll go to the lake on Sunday. But we're going to church. No matter what, we're gonna go to church. Because it's amazing how when you just stick with the plan, ongoing consistency, monotony, 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 suddenly miracles will start coming from that monotony. And you won't even really know when it happened. But somebody's going to say, something's different about you. When did you start noticing the difference? I don't even know. I just know that I just decided I was going to be consistent with my pursuit of my Savior. I mean, it's the least I can do. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to, I'm going to pray. I'm going to join a small group. And, and instead of thinking, but, you know, I tried a small group once and it, didn't work out, a bunch of weird people in that group. Well, change groups. Like I said, just change. There might be some weird people in some groups. We got a lot of groups. They probably thought you were weird. <laughs> they might have thought you were weird, though, because there was, it met 12 times and you only came three times because you weren't. Small groups didn't work for me. Was it ongoing consistency? I dare you to just work the plan, work the system. Attend growth track. Join a small group. Connect to our rock star team here at North Rock. Join us as we launch into 21 days of prayer and fasting, which, by the way, starts tomorrow. 21 days of prayer and fasting. We always set aside time at the beginning of the year to pray and fast together. We kind of tithe the first part of the year to Jesus because he deserves it. We want him to know that we're serious about his plans for us in this, in this new year. We're serious about the unfinished business that he has with us. And so we're gonna pray together and fast together as a church over these next three weeks and beginning with our 21 days of prayer, first of all, we're going to pray. I wanna invite you to pray at some point between the hours of 6 and 8 a.m. for 21 straight days. I'm not asking you to pray for two hours. I'm asking you to pray at some point between the hours of 6 and 8 a.m. If you can't do that because of your work or whatever reason, then find another time. But pray with us for 21 straight days. Every Tuesday morning, every Tuesday morning of the year, including two days from now, we meet right here in this building on our Stone Oak campus at 7 a.m. for prayer, 7 to 8 a.m., and we pray together as a church. I would love for this Tuesday to be the largest Tuesday morning prayer we've ever had in the history of North Rock Church. Pray with us. Next week, the week of the 13th through the 17th, the second week of, of this season of prayer, we're going to actually pray every morning right here in the building. Every morning. This, this week, as they've already announced, we have the first Wednesday prayer this Wednesday night. But, but again, next week we're going to pray, and I'll talk about it next week, but we're going to be in the building all week between 7 and 8 a.m. praying right here in this room. Along with this time of prayer, we're going to fast together. And the way we do our 21 days of prayer at North Rock is we do what is called a 777 fast. We break it up into three different segments. And it just kind of helps people jump on the bandwagon who might be here next weekend, but they weren't here this weekend or whatever. Um, and we break this fast up into three different segments. And if you're new to 
fasting and the idea of fasting. Fasting is, first of all, it's a very biblical principle. And the scripture says that if you're bound by something, if there's any bondage in your life you need to break free from, any change that you need to make, call a fast and fast. Fasting is like pressing a reset button in our soul. It's, it, it helps us to eliminate distractions in our life, things that are going on in our world that are distracting us from God's voice and God's direction. We push those distractions to the side and, and it puts us in a posture to receive from God. It's like the old radio analogy where God is always speaking, but we're not tuned into the right frequency. We're tuned into all sorts of other things. Good things, but things that are distracting us from hearing God's voice. So fasting helps us to, 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 to tune out those distractions and tune into God. Tune into God. And the way that we're doing it is the first week we're going to fast from food. And some people will actually fast from all food and maybe just drink uh, milk, uh, well, water, juices, I should say, over the course of the week. Um, others will fast from some food items. Some might fast for three days and others might go for, you eat, eat one meal a day. So basically every 24-hour period you're, you're fasting for 24 hours and then eating a meal. Some your body might not allow you to do that because of your particular work or medication or something like that, um, but you can still join us in this food fast by fasting from certain drinks, certain food items, and like, don't fast from cauliflower this week because, I mean, come on, let's make sure that it's, you're fasting from something that actually causes you a, a level of discomfort, if you will, sweets, bread, whatever it might be, coffee, soft drinks, I'm just giving you some ideas. But this week, these seven days, we're fasting from food and drink items, or, or all food. The next seven days, we'll fast from technology. I'll tell you more about that. That's going to be a great one. And then the last seven days from that one thing that you cannot go a day without, all right? Join us on this fast. And during this time of fasting, um, in your chair when you sat down, there's a guide here that um, talks through the different areas of fasting that we're going to do for these next three weeks. And then on the back... There's a Bible reading plan, and it's very simple. It's just the book of Acts, the book of Acts. Um, and I encourage you to read through the book of Acts with us as we fast and pray together over these next three weeks. Some of you are not sure about where to start with reading the Bible, and uh, of course, I encourage you to start in the Gospels, but the book of Acts is a great place to start because that's where the church that we're still part of today started. So read through this plan with us. Let's fast. Let's pray. Let's dive off into our scriptures together. The reason we do this for 21 days is because research tells us that if you do something for 21 days, it actually turns into a habit. It turns into a habit. Very naturally, will turn into a habit. It's habit forming. So I don't want this to be a short term intensity. I want this to be ongoing consistency in your life where prayer and Bible reading is just part of your daily routine. I brush my teeth and I pray. I eat breakfast, I feed my uh, physical body, and I talk to God, I read my Bible and feed my spiritual body, my spiritual man. Just part of who I am and what I do. And I believe that over these next three weeks that we're gonna experience some miracles in our church some breakthroughs in our church, that there are some people who are, are battling some things, people who are looking for answer, looking for directions, and, and you're going to get direction. You're going to get those answers. You're going to get that breakthrough that you're looking for. Every year, whenever I fast, I have a breakthrough in some area of my life. I'm putting myself in a posture to receive. So, of course, God, who's out to bless me, has the opportunity to bless me because I'm listening, I'm ready, I'm open, my heart is open. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to do this with us over these next three weeks. Let me pray for you today. Let me pray for you today. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your grace. I thank you, God, for speaking to us today, for working in this room, for working in every heart and every mind. God, those that are at crossroads today, they stand kind of in the precipice of a brand new year, a brand new decade. 
Lord Jesus, I pray that you would give us the courage and the audacity to walk down the right paths, to move in the right direction, to make the changes that we need to make, to tweak the values and the priorities that need to be tweaked in our life, Lord Jesus. Because we want to arrive at our desired destination, at your desired destination. So God, our direction must match where we want to go. Give us the courage to take that stand, sever unhealthy relationships, unhealthy habits, and make room for some new healthy habits and healthy relationships. And God, those people who are in this room who are not in a relationship with you, who might feel a million miles from you, help them to sense just how close you are to them right now, just how much you love them. Help them to sense that even in their brokenness, you love them just like they are. You accept them just like they are. In their fear, in their anxiety, in their addiction, you accept them just like they are. But you love them too much to leave them that way. You want to save them, God, and you want to change them. If you're in the room today and you're not in a relationship with Jesus, I want to pray a prayer and give you an opportunity to surrender your life to him. Maybe you have never taken that step of faith and said yes to Jesus. Or maybe you need to rededicate your life as you launch into this new year, and you know it. You need to recommit your life to him. Either way, this moment is for you. So I want to give you an opportunity to take that step of faith and to surrender your life to Him. I'm going to pray a simple prayer of surrender. I'm going to pray for you right where you're seated. And if you're in the room and you know that you need a fresh start on this first Sunday of 2020, please take that courageous step of faith. So with nobody looking around in this sacred moment, all heads bowed, all eyes closed, I want to see who I'm praying for. If you'd say, Jonathan, I need, I need a fresh start today. I need to surrender to Jesus. Come on, throw your hand in the air all over the room. Come on, throw it high in the air. Beautiful, guys. Hold them high and leave them there if you don't mind. I love it. All over the building. That's incredible. I'm starting over today. It's going to be my greatest year ever. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. Come on, Alamo Heights. Hold them high in the air. It's awesome. Beautiful. All right. You can put your hands down now. Now, I'm going to pray a simple prayer of surrender, both locations. I invite everybody in the room to pray this along with me in your own words. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you wholeheartedly on this first weekend of a brand new year. I'm starting over. I'm following you, Jesus. I invite you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. I'm making a fresh start today. Forgive me of my sins, God. I believe in you. I believe you gave your life for me and that you rose from the grave. And today, I'm making you the Lord of my life. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And everybody said amen.